Aaron Woodson is a Florida-based military combat veteran who has served in the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Air National Guard for over 15 years. He began his military career participating in military campaigns such as Operation Iraq, Freedom, and Inherent Resolve. At a very young age, Aaron began to nurture interest and passion for poetry. He began to write poems at school, and his love for writing grew so deeply that he told his parents that someday he would publish his own book. Having moved to Jacksonville in 2016, he decided to finish up his now completed book, The Face of Expression, a poetry book that fuses storytelling and nonfiction. The Face of Expression highlights topics about life, love, pain, struggle, rejection, faith, and experiences. And we'll get to hear more about the sequels to the first book today. So Aaron gets his inspiration to write from his spirituality, traveling, singing, music, positive quotes, and experiences, among other things. Aaron will be joined in conversation with another local author and journalist, Taryn Lovereins Warwood. Interviewer Taryn Lovereins Warwood is a poet, writer, author, MC, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and curator. So Taryn is the program manager for the Performance Academy, which uses the healing power of the arts as behavioral intervention and diversion for youth and teens. She also conducts weekly writing workshops for adults in recovery, at-risk youth, in drug rehabilitation centers, youth in foster care, and in juvenile det detention centers. She is the CEO of I Am Love Reigns Enterprises that provides online business solutions for small to medium-sized businesses, artists, and ent entertainers. She also hosts the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast, which she began during the pandemic as a way to connect the world with creators during quarantine. She is also the founder of Artistry Live, the Closet Jacks, and co-founder of the Cypher Open Mic Poetry and Soul, which is to date the longest running open mic in Jacksonville history. Okay. So Taryn, I leave the rest to you. All right. Good evening, good evening. All right, so this is going to be fun. Uh, I, I know Aaron very well, so uh, for those of you who don't uh, who don't know Aaron, I've had the honor of of seeing him uh, perform and blossom as a, not only an author but as a poet and performer. Uh, so, Aaron, for the folks who may not know, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to become a writer. Yeah, definitely. My name is Aaron Woodson. I'm originally from Vallejo, California. Uh, you know, I, I joined the U.S. Uh, Air Force back in 20, or excuse me, 2001. And, uh, you know, I did a, had a 15-year career, a 15-year run. Uh, basically, uh, I, I served as security forces. Um, you know, just, I went, I went all over the world, traveled the world. I saw many places, different countries, uh, went, went and did a lot of different things. I, I, I knew I wanted to publish my book. Uh, my, I told my family that someday I would. It took me the 20, actually 20 years to actually put, um, put out my first book. And uh, actually one of, the, one of my audience members, my good friends, had, had just bought the book before I came in. So I yeah, had the face of expression and uh, it's just, it's just been something my, where I'm at now is just, uh, it's been an impressive journey, yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. So as far as writing, I was listening to uh, some of your interviews and you said that you used poetry, uh, especially in high school, to uh, you know talk to girls and if you had a crush. <laughs> so, yes, yes. <laughs> so talk about, about that, like how, how did that, that feel when you would, how did you know that poetry was the way that you wanted to go to start expressing yourself? You know, honestly, poetry was just something that just vibed with me. Um, just watching like some of my influences, like you know, Tupac Shakur, uh, the late Maya Angelou, uh, Langston Hughes, just to name a few. And uh, you know, I just saw how they, you know, it came across, you know, just expressing themselves through their their art of poetry, and uh, it just resonated with a lot of people. And um, it's just, and I, I loved it in music. I, I mean, to me. Um, poetry. I mean, music is poetry, and uh, that's something that really, uh, drew, you know, got my attention. And I just went from there with it. And and then, of course, you know, it went to the ladies because I, <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> just wanted to speak from my heart, you know. And that, and that's that's where the love came from. So, truth be told, for sure. Do you remember your very first time uh, reciting a poem? Actually, yeah, I do. Um, I think the f one of the first poems was like I, I had 
written it for the school newspaper because I was a all student body historian for um, leadership club leadership course, and um, I remember this poem called "Tell Me, Girl," <laughs> and I wrote this poem like when I was 17 years old and and published it in the paper and, and recited it. So. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So fast forward, you, uh, you, um, you're a military vet, and then you end up in Jacksonville. I think you said it was your cousin uh, mm-hmm. that inspired you to move to, to Florida. Yes. Um, so as far as your time here and, and kind of getting immersed mm-hmm. in the poetry scene, um, what was it? Was it here that you, you got inspired to actually publish your first book, or was it before you got here? Actually, I was born, I was, I knew I was eventually going to publish a book before I moved to Jacksonville, but when I actually moved here, like a, pretty much a year when I was here in Jacksonville, I was like, I need to put this out, like, as soon as possible, and so I, that's where the face of expression came, came into be, like, five years ago, I published it in 2018, so. And how did that feel when you first published, you know, once it was, it was out there and it was was published what was that what was that feeling like oh um, it was it was just liberating I, I was elated i was excited i was just just blown away um because it was my first one you know it's it my baby you know and um uh, i mean i'm not i, I do not have kids but uh <laughs> I, I i felt like man this is like i'm giving birth like literally like just through my writing you know and just i was like wow so you mentioned that it took about 20 years to publish the first book. Uh, so in terms of like the, the characters, was that something, was it a, a personal experience? Is it people that you've met along the way? What was the, the, the premise behind that? Uh, the, the premise behind the book was basically just a, a little bit of everything. My, my personal therapy, the journey, um, you know, because, you know, we, like anybody in this room, we've all been through a lot. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, pour out my heart without reservation. Um, and I wanted to just put it on, put it, put it from my heart to the pages and just kind of just, just let, let my, let my heart speak for me and let people know that, you know, that I, you know, we all have real issues and, uh, I wanted to, you know, connect with my audience with some of those things and just have a conversation in a sense. It's true. Um, so as far as your, you know, your, your writing process, um, like for me, I, you know, I always, people ask me, you know, how do you write and how do you do this? And I always have, um, you don't really pay attention to it at first, but if you look back, you really have a routine. So what's, what's your writing process like? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's changed over many times, but uh, usually it's like a, it starts with a, a thought or something may uh, inspire me in that moment, like a certain word, like a buzzword. Um, for example, there was a poem called Waves uh, that I wrote in this book that's, in, that's propped up here. And um, I just kept get, you know, revert, getting that reverberation about this word, waves. And I was like, okay, I need to write a poem about waves. So, you know, when I hear a certain word that really connects with me, or and I keep seeing it everywhere or hearing it, it's like I got to write about it. Or if I get this feeling, um, something that just I can't shake, I got to write it. And that's just how it comes to be. So face of expression. So you have face of expression one, two, and three. Where uh, where did that title come from? Face of expression. Good question. Uh, actually, the, I was originally going to name the my first book called the the Voice of Connection, and I don't know I, I don't know something about it. When I was in Iraq, I was like, okay, I need to change this title. And what made me change it from that to the Face of Expression was, I was like, wait, I need something that's universal. Like people, you know, I see people every day. I'm always around people all the time. You know, I mean, and I was like, you know and I want to express what's on my heart. And I know people have expressions as well um, that they want to express. And I wanted to just kind of envelope it all together. And I was like, face of expression. And I was like, it just stuck. And it's been, it's been a staple ever since, so. 
Nice. So with the so with each book, is there like an overarching theme that you have? Because you have Face of Expression one, mm-hmm. two, and then now Face of Expression three that you mm-hmm. recently released, uh, Fall of a King. So what what are the themes uh, for each each one? Actually, I mean, I knew going into it, I was going to do a trilogy and, you know, I, I wanted to explore different overarching themes my friends are coming in. Overarching themes such as like, uh, you know, love. I started with love because I wanted to come from a, a good place. Uh, sharing, sharing my love for the poetry, um, the love that I have inside of me uh, for other people, um, you know, the love that I hope to aspire to get when I'm, you know, find that special somebody. Um, and, you know, I talk about, you know, different topics like, uh, you know, racial issues. Uh, I talk about pain, healing. Um, I talk about just think like even anger, like things or PTSD, all these different things that, uh, you know, men go through. Um, you know, sometimes uh, men don't really express their emotions like it's, they're, they're not really allowed to. But I wanted to kind of be that person to kind of say, hey, it's okay to be you and, 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 and get, get out of your own, get out of your own way and, 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 and be comfortable in your own skin, basically. I will say that that is one of the things that I admire about you uh, in terms of seeing you perform and seeing you and reading your poetry, because like you said, men aren't you know, quote unquote, allowed to, it's not the norm, Um, but you definitely step outside of the box and you go against the grain Mm -hmm. with that. And I know that that's not easy. So how do you continue to uh, be inspired and motivated to to do that? You know, it's, it's not easy, but to be honest with you, I just knew, I just knew I, I have a message and, and I'm, a, I'm on a mission on this earth. And, you know, one of my gifts that God has given me is to write. And I needed to, I need, I need to, it's not just about me. It's about, you know, having a voice because there's people up there that, that may look up to, to me or they may, you know, resonate with what I'm saying. And they need that. They need, they need uh, that mentorship. They need something they need people that feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not on an island. Basically, um, you know, they need they need that. They need they need encouragement. We all need encouragement. We all need inspiration. We all need, uh, you know, a voice to, to just kind of help us along and you know help us find our way. For sure. So, the with the face of expression one, mm-hmm. um, how was the response? to that and then the follow-up to that is um what was the feeling to actually start writing face of expression to oh good question again um the response to the first one was overwhelmingly it was really welcoming well received uh you know people really enjoyed it um i i got a lot of great reviews um you know just people saying that it was uh, a great introductory, uh, you know, debut, uh, not or debut poetry book, and they they said it was a really easy read. Um, it, it really was easy for them to connect with it, and uh, and, I, and they really they really loved it. And uh, that to the follow up, which was fo- the face of expression two, um, the, the face of expression two in your face, that one would inspire me to do that one because I wanted to kind of top the first one. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to, you know, kind of remix it and kind of. I wanted people to see more of the the real me, and it was just like therapy for me. Um, just a, you know, a lot of it was therapy for me, but also um, maybe therapy for other people as well. It's just sharing. For sure. So I know a lot of poets, especially when it comes to compiling everything in a book, it's uh, it's hard to it's often hard to decide which poems that you want to actually put out there that you want to go into a book. So how did talk about that process in terms of deciding which poems were going to go in which book? Yeah, that that one was was something. Um, because, you know, when you're writing, you're just like, okay, 
I'm just writing just to be writing. But and when you actually trying to organize it, you know, it's it's like the chapters in a book. You know, you're 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 telling a story, and that's kind of how I felt with you know with this the book the process of the book writing. Um, I wanted to pick the pick the poems that I felt uh, would would make sense in the like in the beginning. Like I think the beginning and the endings were hard, the most challenging. And uh, you know, for example, beautiful struggle. Um, I felt like life is a struggle. You know what I'm saying in the first book. And so I, I started with that, and then I kind of ended with take charge on the first book. So I wanted to go from okay, this is my struggle, but I wanna I wanna take ownership. I wanna take leadership and and move forward with my life. And then um, second book, I believe. I started with a letter to my mom. Yes, I started with a letter to my mom. And, uh, you know, she's the reason why I'm here, part of the reason why I'm here. And so I had to give her her flowers. And then I think the ending of my second one was Genius is Common. And that was an inspiration from meeting a poet, uh, someone who ran uh, the poetry uh, circuit on BET. And so it was kind of cool to connect with somebody that actually does poetry like me. Yeah. So tell us about Face of Expression 3, The Fall of a King. Yes, this book right here, this is my newest, latest, and greatest book um, that came out the first of this year, January 1st. Um, this one is basically everything, I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that if this was gonna be the last book that I write in the trilogy or you know, in the series, I wanted to go out with a bang, you know, I wanted to make sure that the audience, you know, I, I pretty much wanted them to connect with me even deeper and deeper than ever. And I, I feel like with this book, I feel like I've explored so many themes. I mean, I've uncovered a lot. I'm sure there was a lot more I could have added, but I feel like I, I wrote two in one. <laughs> but uh, it was it was uh, it was uh, probably my most challenging book to write to date. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, I had to really explore like a lot of things, a lot of things I went through while writing this book. And sometimes I feel like, you know, your best, your best work happens when you're going through a lot of pain. And I've been, you know, we're not, we're no strangers to pain. We all, we all, pain is a, pain is a catalyst. It, it's, it's, it, it get, it's our platform to power. And I had to be like, you know, this is this is powerful for me. I wanted to show that, hey, I'm resilient. I, I can I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this is something that God gave me. And nobody and nothing could take that ever take that away from me. And uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to give people, you know, the best, the best that was yet to come. And I, I always say that the best is yet to come. So. Absolutely. So what is it? So with, with this trilogy, I'm sure that there are more, and we'll talk about that in just, a, in just a sec, but what is it overall that you want people or readers to get from the Face of Expression trilogy? Um, overall, I, I do want, I guess you could say, I, I would like my readers to um, be open-minded to, to receiving um, different different messages, different um, diverse diversity of the poems. Um, you know, they're all different in their own unique way. Um, and it speaks to people differently. Um, I don't think that it's just a one-way kind of conversation that I'm giving to people with these poems. I, I, I really want people to, you know, kind of meditate on it. You know, they can pick it up and they can kind of just absorb the material um, just by just maybe a reflection, maybe something, maybe it's something that like in the poems make them remind them of a, their favorite memory or, or a favorite place or setting they've been to. Uh, I just want them to kind of understand that this is like a legacy. This is like my legacy that I've added on to my series, my, my you know, this is, this is, this is this is what I'm trying to do, and yeah, I love yeah. that. I like that. So, um, in terms of legacy, right? Mm -hmm. What's next? What What is after? Like, so you said you did. You threw everything but the kitchen sink. 
yes. in this last book. Mm -hmm. So what's next? You know, um, I did write a screenplay uh, back in 2021 during COVID. It's called Aaliyah and Troy. Uh, me and my friend, uh, Mike Messier, who's an accomplished filmmaker, uh, you know, he, he moved out here a few years ago and we connected um, on a, on a, actually we're con connecting on a rehearsal um, where we were gonna do a, a stage play, but it got canceled because of COVID. So me and him talked and I told him, you know, I'm, I was an author or a poet and uh, he said, and he gave me the idea. He said, you know, when we were talking, he said, have you ever thought about writing a screenplay with your books? And I said, actually, yeah, that was, I mentioned it to him, but it just kind of just came together. He gave me, he sparked my idea again because I kind of forgot about it because I had so many other things going on at the time. But we got together at this local coffee shop and, you know, we just brainstormed, put, put the storyline together based around the poetry and around the life experiences that I've had. And, uh, you know, it just really, really came together very well. And uh, the, the next step is actually getting a budget and putting the, mo the, the movie on the screen because I want people to see this story unfold in real time. So from your mouth to God's ears, I know it's going to happen for sure. Yes. So uh, Aaliyah, so the screenplay is a, it's about Aaliyah and Troy. Mm -hmm. You said Aaliyah is one of your favorite singers. Yes. Uh, and yes. Troy is, and was named after your uncle. Yes. Right. My uncle All right. Troy. So what, uh, what's the story? What's the, what's the storyline about Aaliyah and Troy? Oh, sure. I'd love to give that to y'all. Uh, so basically Troy is basically me. Um, I'm basically like, he's basically like a military veteran who gets out of the service and he's looking for a job. He's struggling to, you know, to make it in the civilian world, so to speak. So he goes to this coffee shop every day and looking, he looks through the classifieds, looking for, looking for the jobs that he needs to find. And one day uh, he meets a beautiful, beautiful young lady named Aaliyah. But, but, you know, before he meets her, he meets her, her daughter because her daughter went in the coffee shop to get uh, coffee. <laughs> and she one day, you know, she just was, just went up and talked to Troy, you know, talking to strangers. You know, you know how kids are. They talk to strangers, talk to everybody. And so uh, so, you know, Lily is like, wait, what's taking so long? You know, where's my child at? So she goes in there, finds finds uh, uh, Rosa talking to Troy. <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, man, why, why are you talking to this strange man? And so uh, Troy, I don't know, Troy just basically like, you know, connects with Aaliyah, just saying, hey, I'm just, you know, your daughter was just talking to me, and you know, I didn't mean to hold you up. But she, come to find out, Aaliyah's a Zumba instructor, and you know, I take Zumba in real life. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> ask, ask my boys here, ask my friends here, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah, so to make a long story short, uh, Aaliyah and Troy connect, they build this great friendship. Um, Aaliyah introduces Troy to the world of poetry, uh, he, something he hasn't been accustomed to. Um, and so Aaliyah takes Troy to uh, her sister's her sister's club, uh, Club Expressions, where um, it, sets the sh it sets up the scene for a poetry tournament. And Aaliyah's ex-boyfriend, uh, or should I say on and off again boyfriend, Brett, who pretty much comes in and out of town doing, you know, kind of touring, doing poetry tours, he's a poetry champion. And so the stage is set for a tournament that's announced and Troy, is reluctant to join this tournament, but he's encouraged by Aaliyah to, to get involved. And Brett, he's gonna go against Brett. And he and it sets the show down to battle, battle it out on the stage and also for Aaliyah's heart. So. Oh, I like that. I would like to see that on a, uh, uh, on a screen. So, okay. well, you know, funders out there. Let's make that happen for sure. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Let's make that happen. So, um, one of the things that I love about being a poet is you mentioned earlier about how people relate to your work. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I love is when, when we're when after you perform and you meet someone in the audience and they say, oh, man, this, you know, the poem that you, you did, it touched me in in such a way. Right. Um, but sometimes 
people what you think people will get from the poem, it's the complete opposite, right? So how yeah. has that ever happened to you? And, and, and can you tell us about an experience? Yeah, actually, yeah, it happens quite a bit. Um, you know, when you actually think that the poem will land and it might resonate with somebody, sometimes it don't. <laughs> sometimes you're like, whoa, okay. So, and then there's some poems that you think, okay, this might not resonate with these people, but for some reason, somebody will come up to you and say, hey, uh, this poem was really good. You know, I really enjoyed your, what you said and, or yada, yada, yada. So um, this one particular poem, what was it? Ma Man in the Mirror. Uh, that was inspired by Michael Jackson. Wow. He's one of my, my favorite, my fa one of my favorite entertainers. Um, I, I kind of like, <laughs> I did. I, I, I see. It. I peep it. I peep it. I peep it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, you know, the, I've had people tell me like from the books some of their favorites. Um, some of them I didn't even think they would. It would be their favorites. But Man in the Mirror, some seems to be the most popular one in the first one. And you know, I was like, okay, this is kind of a simple poem. I didn't. I felt like it was like you know not my best, but. You know, if people enjoy it, you know, hey, I like that. I like the feedback, and I just um, I just think that it's cool that people even take the time to even give you feedback because, you know, they don't have to if they don't want to, but it's nice to get it. I mean, I w I'm welcome to that, and, uh, you know, it's just great. Even after a performance, like open mics, uh, there was one I did, I think it was at Jazzy's called The Gambler, and, uh, you know, that was that was kind of putting myself out there. You know what I mean? So that people people like that one. I think they or, or what was the other one? Uh, oh, love is a soldier. Yes. Love is a soldier. That was that one. Man, I got a little animated. People like, what? <laughs> so what was what was it about that one? Because, uh, you know, that one, I don't know. It was like during Valentine's Day. I, I performed it, yes, like last year for Valentine's Day. I, I, I'll never forget, I just, something just came over me. I just started getting passionate and I kind of was yelling, like kind of, my voice was emphatic, you know, animated. And I just got, I got into, you know, this like military mode again, like love is a soldier. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and you know, people were digging it, you know, or sometimes I'll say like make it turn it into a sermon like like I'll take it to church. You know, you know, I ain't afraid to take it to church on a poem now. Like <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Poetry is church, you know. Yeah. It really it really is. It really is yeah. church. Do you have a uh a favorite poem? <sighs> wow. <laughs> um it's 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 great that you asked me this question. Um it's this is probably my most emotional poem, and I would say today is fitting because today is my late grandmother's birthday, heavenly birthday, and I wrote a poem for Happy her. Happy birthday, Grandma. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you all for being here. Um, you know, to be honest with you, this poem I wrote a few days before she passed in 2019. Um, it was called 88 Keys, and... Um, you know, the reason why I came up with 88 Keys was because, uh, you know, I thought about the piano and I remember my grandma had a picture of a, of a piano keys on a framed on, on a portrait. And I remember just thinking like, OK, my grandma's 88 and a piano has 88 keys. And um, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go all out and pour everything out I can into this poem. I, I cried when I wrote this poem because that's how painful it was because she passed away from uh, dementia. And um, she meant, she was everything to me. My grandma just, you know, even today, I mean, it's just hard sometimes, you know, but I know she's my guardian angel. She watches over me. And, um, you know, when I said the poem to her at, when she was laying on the hospital bed, pretty much two days before she passed, uh, I remember she couldn't move, she couldn't talk. But the, she did have a smile on her face when I when I when I recited the poem. It was finished, and I, it was like my way of connecting with her. My last few moments with her, and it was special, special. She's here. We she feel is. Like she's here. So, she do you would you mind sharing the poem with us? Actually, 
Um, let me see. I, I have to read it no from pressure, my phone. No pressure. No right. pressure. Yeah. Okay. Give me. Give me a minute, because <laughs> it's in my second book, and I don't have my second book with me because I, you know, sold out of those. No pressure. Hey, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Selling out. <laughs> you know, for real. That's we, what it is. Sold out. We're gonna we're gonna claim sold out on all of them. There we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and while you're looking for that, as far as um, your your poetry is concerned, um, you know, you were able to share that with your. I think that's one of the things that I'm not gonna say I regret it, but I think I started to um, show how I feel, or express how I feel yeah. later in life. And so, I lost my grandmother at 15. Oh, yeah and my grandfather at 21 and there was so much I wanted to say to them that I didn't get a chance to say. Yeah. So I think that it's amazing that you were able to honor her with a poem before she transitioned. So yeah. that's awesome. It was great. I mean, it was like night and day because I lost my grandfather back when I was in Korea um, and I didn't get to say goodbye to him. Um, I was on my way to going back to saying goodbye but he passed, what, two weeks before I could even get there. So, but, you know, and it was different. I said, I was mad. I was mad at God for a while. You know, I ain't gonna lie. Um, and God answered my prayer when I asked him. I said, at least let me get home to see my grandmother. At least you know, pay my final respects to her before she passes. And, I, and, I was, and I'm glad he was able to let me do that. So, uh, you know, oh, I got, I got it. <laughs> I got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and recite this poem. Um, it, it's a little lengthy, because it came from the heart, and uh, I poured everything into it, so b bear with me, guys. I'm gonna stand up. up here. Open mic style, there we go. That's it, that's it. 88 keys to my grandmother, happy birthday. You were born April 12th, 1931. God put you on this earth for a season. You are one of the main reasons I'm here writing this poem to you right now. It is my great honor and privilege to show you nothing but unconditional love. You deserve flowers and so much more. I really hope you can smell them now. Your life was a sweet fragrance to the world. Oh, how I adore you, my dear sweet granny. Fannie Mae Wallace, you made such a significant impact on many lives you touched. You were, you were and continue to be a blessing to everyone that ever loved and knew you. Years went by seemingly so expeditiously. The love I have for you can be seen through the many tears that I shed for you. You always made everyone feel welcome in your glorious presence. You always were the brightest candle that no one could ever hold on to. You made me believe in myself. You made everyone else believe in themselves too. You made believers out of all of us because God, God was the center of it all in your life. If you were an instrument, I would say you're the grand piano. I remember I always heard you sing the most beautiful, beautiful church hymns. You sang in the choir, but soon you will receive your reward for being a true and faithful servant of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We celebrate you, my dear granny. Your journey is now coming to an end. We know you've been tired for quite some time. Now you may rest in his kingdom. When I see a piano, I will try to play a song and think of you. You are 88 years old. The piano has 88 keys. I would say you left us with many chords of memories. Your legacy will live on. And I will always cherish everything we ever shared together. Even in the pain you endured. Your resilience was a stroke of genius. You flashed radiance and grace with such unique humility I have ever seen. Be with the king, my dear sweet granny. Your 88 keys will be on a high note to glory. I can hear you singing now. Jesus keeps 
me near the cross or the angels keep watching over me hmm. <sighs> you're on the wings of love and soon you'll be flying high I'll look up to the sky and I'll play the 88 keys for you and only you. I love you, Granny, until we meet again. Happy birthday, Granny. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank so I you. think we have just a few more minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so what's next? What is next for Aaron Woodson, what's next with this, you know, uh, I know you're, we're, well, we're going to be waiting for some funders to hit us up, you know, to let us know, hey, appreciate y'all. we want to make this into a movie, but what's next? Um, actually, I would say the next step is, you know, obviously the screenplay, and I have been really wanting to put together an R&B spoken word album. Ooh, I, okay. I want to do this so badly. Um, I think it would be a unique way to kind of just it, introduce myself to a new audience, basically, uh, you know, let people hear music merge. You know, it, music and music and words go good together. They fit really well together. It's like a marriage, you know. Um, I'm not married yet, but you know that, that <laughs> you know here, no there, but uh, it's it's gonna be fun because I mean I would I'd love I love to do collaborations. Um, you know, I, I want to, you know, get with some of the people that do good R&B sounds, some blues, some jazz, some gospel. I want to do it all, all up. And uh, I think it, I mean, because I've already done an audio book, but just if I could just do it like with music, oh, man, that'll be a game changer right there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, and I think uh, after that, I, I, my next thing would be to do an autobiography. Um, just kind of like write, tell my my whole life story and just kind of just let it be that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm a, so I'm looking forward to that uh, that R and B and poetry. I think that would be I think yeah. that would be awesome. You got to be on the album too. Oh, of course. You gotta of be course. on there. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be honored. I'd be honored too, for sure, yeah. for sure. So, um, is there anything before we get into questions from the audience? Is there anything that you want uh, people out there to know about Aaron Woodson? Um, what I want my audience to know, I mean, my, my friends know me very well that are in attendance. Um, they've, been, they've been with me through a lot, you know. Um, they've seen me at my, my best and they've seen me at my worst. <laughs> but uh, I just, I want people to know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a determined individual. I'm a man of God, a man of faith, a warrior. Um, I'm a type of person, I'm passionate. I'll definitely say I'm passionate. Definitely someone who uh, is like, like I, like to, I like to be the life of the party sometimes. And uh, I like to dance. I like to, I just like to be, be free. I like to have freedom. I don't like to be in a box. Um, and I like to encourage and uplift people. And cha I wanna be, I wanna change the world. Yeah. Well, you are definitely doing that, Mr. Woodson. So we appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you for all that you do, and thank you for your work. Thank you for continuing to spread love and spread that positivity out there. Thank you so much, Tara. So, all right. Love. So ready for questions? Absolutely. So thank you both to Taryn and Aaron for this wonderful conversation. We're going to open it up to questions. So if you have a question you'd like to ask, you can go ahead and use the clipboards underneath your chairs and write it out, and I'll go ahead and collect. Um, and for our Zoom audience, if you have a question, please write it in the chat. Um, and we have someone write it, and I'll bring it to Taryn. But we already have some questions ready. So let me hand this over to you. Yeah. All right. Question number one. What interested you about poetry versus other forms of writing? What, what interested me about poetry versus other, other themes of writing is that poetry, it has its own identity. Um, I think, actually I studied Shakespeare um, when I was in fifth grade I'll, and 
I, 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 and I thought it was kind of cool. Like he had the different type. He was a playwright, and I kind of, it started from there, and it kind of um, unpacked into, okay, I, I got introduced to like different writers, you know, and I wanted to write poetry, just express myself. That that was really the main thing. Just have that have that freedom to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That was your lane, right? Yeah, you had to, yeah. you found your lane. All right, so in your writing, you allow yourself to be vulnerable by including mm -hmm. parts of your personal life. Mm -hmm. Did you approach your writing with the intention of being vulnerable uh, like that, or were those just the stories and topics that came out during your writing? Um, those were the, the topics during, during the writing process. Um, I didn't really go into it thinking like, hey, I'm going to spill my guts out. Like, <laughs> nah. Right. It never happens like that, right? Nah, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was just my, my main thing my, from my first book. I, I knew it was just mostly about love. I wanted to talk about love, but I didn't even really, I mean, I hadn't really got to that point yet. I was just like aspiring to get to this, this love I wanted. And then once we got to the second book and third book, it was like, oh, I'm getting kind of kind of deep in here. You know, it's just it, 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 it just kind of I think once you're dealing with things and, and, and maybe it just kind of comes up, a, you know, a thought or if something that's laid on your heart. That's when that's when it comes. I, I think beforehand, no. Uh, no. Nah. All right. Yeah. So publishing a book was a lifelong dream of yours. Mm -hmm. And now you've gone to, gone on to publish a poetry series. So one, congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, what are some of the surprises in your publishing journey? Some of the surprises in my publishing journey? Um, I, well, it's, you know, a lot, a lot of people ask, you know, what's the hardest part? And I would say the marketing has been a lot of surprises because there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know like that you have to do to, to actually market a book. It's, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. but you know, it's worth it. You know, I'm not complaining. I'm just thankful that, you know, it, you know, you, you know, you learn, you know, it's a, it's a chance to grow and get introduced to new people, new audience. Um, and, and just, you know, find innovative ways to kind of just reach, reach people through through your writing through your product you know and i just wanted to you know learn that yeah. i'm still learning that yeah. same same <laughs> same so and now and now you know while we wait for the other questions i will say to any aspiring publisher um out there the the hardest part is actually doing it right um but you can do it now is the time, it's, it's easier now more than ever to actually publish your work and self-publish. So that is something that you can do. So if you're thinking about doing it, just do it. Go ahead and do it, right? And once you, once you upload it uh, and just send it off, it's done. You can't take it back. It's done, so just do it. Get it out there, right? God gave you, uh, or whoever you believe in, gave you the thought uh, and the, the motivation to do it and the inspiration to do it. So just do it. Somebody's waiting on you uh, to, to tell your story. So do you have uh, a go-to place when you write or do you write when it hits you and do you have a routine? We kind of touched on this a little bit, but expound on that just a little bit. A little bit of both. Um, you know, sometimes some of my poems will be in a coffee shop. Sometimes I wrote in a bar. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's if I'm true. Honest, it's I true. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Like when I would do those open mics, I mean, at, at uh, with the real team, I wrote, I wrote a few poems there. You know what I'm saying? Or, or on the beach sometimes. Uh, it, you know, a lot of times it's usually when I'm out, even sitting in my car. You know, I find myself in my car a lot, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, and that's when a lot of things just hit you, and um, just. Yeah, just a whole lot, just, you know, with the writing, sometimes in nature. Um, I think that's kind of cool, too, when you connect with nature. It's, that's when it can hit you, too, or, or I'm at church, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, my car is, a, is definitely a place that I, I do a lot of my, my poems. How did you go about uh, no, no your question. editing and publishing stages? Um, my editing and publishing stages? I will tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The first book, I didn't have no editor. 
I, I, I was my I was my editor. I was the editor. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes, right? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, I ain't gonna lie. You know, at the time, you know, I'm a, I'm a young young guy. I didn't really have a lot of cash at the time. You know, it's, it's expensive. You know, but uh, I learned from that first book, and you know, from there, I had got an editor like my my publisher now, um, Frizella Taylor. Um, she's a really dear friend of mine a very professional um, person. Um, She worked in the banking industry and she, uh, she got me right. She got me right. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Uh, So, you know, and, and, and it just, it's a difference, you know, because I see, I see how a a, a correctly formatted and edited book looks versus my first one. Not, I mean, not saying, I mean, people, for some reason, they love my first one now. I mean, but at the same time, it's just, I could tell, I, I mean, you, I know my my style and you know the well, trial and error for sure yeah yeah trial yeah. and error yes yeah. Uh, and last question uh, on this card most most cost effective way to start a book most cost effective way to start a book um, I would probably say an ebook just just write an ebook that way you don't have to worry about printing costs and all that that jazz, um, that, that's probably the cheapest. Um, and, and I would add to that, KDP, right, through oh yeah, Amazon. Um, I self-published my first book through KDP. There's also another one, uh, it's called Create Space, Yes. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, is a self-publishing. Um, now, it, it, it can be a little time-consuming, right? I mean, but in, in terms of, of self-publishing, I would definitely say that those, those are the, the cheapest yeah. routes that I've found. I so, do, oh. so I just want to repeat the question for the audience uh, on Zoom. So the the question was, do you take your phone with you? Uh, do you take a notepad with you um, when thoughts hit you? And, and how? So how do you how do you capture your thoughts? Actually, I do both. But if if I'm really honest, like uh, I'd say I do. I have a lot of written written stuff on pads or paper, even even paper towels I've, I've, I, anything receipts I can, envelopes <laughs> anything you get your hand sometimes you know yeah scratch paper because <laughs> sometimes you want to keep that thought you don't want that thought to leave you and it's like I, but there's been times like where I've written on my phone and sometimes like I don't know what it is about when I put I write it on Facebook like on a like I'll, I'll write it and then like I'll I guess for a second come back to it and, and my, my poem erases I'm like, oh God. I, so I'd rather do it just writing it down, and you know that way I have something to kind of go back to. It's just I don't know something something about when the pen hits the paper. I, I just really really feel con- yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So it's just it, you know I'm sure you know. Like, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean I, I I I've just now started to get to the point where I like I'll write it in my notes. Yeah on my phone and then I'll transfer it. Um, but you know, but you're right. There's something about, you know, putting writing with a real pen on a real paper, um, and, and on a deeper level in terms of spirituality, right? You have to write it down and make it plain, right? If you write it, um, to me it, it just it's more meaningful. Yeah, it resonates a little more. Slash actor <laughs> there's more to come but, yeah. i'm sure oh, i'm no. sure so thank you all so much thank you guys so much for being here